Let's talk then about one of the applications of the diagonalization of a matrix. When I've written a matrix A in this diagonalizer factored form, one thing I can very efficiently do with that factorization is compute very large powers of the matrix with relative computational ease. So for instance, supposing I have a diagonalized form of a matrix A, what would it look like then if I computed A squared based on that diagonalization? Well, A squared is A times A, so I can write this as A in factored form, P, D, P inverse times P, D, P inverse. Now by properties of matrix multiplication, I can reassociate the middle multiplication of those matrices, and in other words, apply that multiplication first. So P inverse times P is the identity matrix, so this results therefore in P, D, the identity, times D, P inverse. However, the identity times any matrix is itself, so if I reassociate again, D times the identity is D. In other words, I have D times D, which is D squared in the middle, so I get the following result, P, D squared, P inverse. Okay. In lieu of actually computing A squared, I could, on the other hand, compute P, D squared, P inverse. And as we'll see momentarily then, if I compute a higher power of A, the same pattern emerges. But it allows me to really save a lot of computational grief by just extending the exponent here to the diagonal matrix. So if we extend that example in a natural way for higher powers of A, I can, by a similar argument, write A in its factored form qubit, collect those diagonal matrices in the middle and end up with P D cubed P inverse. The same goes for A to the fourth and really any A to any large, let's say, positive integer power. So A to the K by induction, in other words, it follows, is equal to P times that diagonal matrix to the K power times P inverse. Now notice the computational saving that we're accruing here. If K were a colossal power, if it were 10,000 or what have you, in lieu of doing literally millions and millions of computations to compute with various dot products the power of A, I could instead just multiply those three matrices together. Now you might wonder, well, hold on, what about the computational power required to determine the diagonal matrix D to a power? As it turns out, to raise a diagonal matrix to a power, for instance, let's say the matrix uh, A0, 0, B, just to choose a simple example, if I want to raise this to the K power, that's actually equivalent, if you think about it, through matrix multiplication to actually just raising each of the components along the diagonal, everything else will clear out to the kth power. So, in short, it isn't very taxing to raise a diagonal matrix to a high power, much better than actually doing these many, many tedious computations for A.